Hey, welcome back. It's Andrea, a South African girl living in Canada. Today, I'm chatting with Vincent Hayes, and we're talking about wills and powers of attorney. So welcome Vincent, welcome back. Can you believe we're doing a chat again on the couch and it's mid and summer's here. Thanks Andrea, it's great to be here and it's a lovely spot. Thank it's you. awesome. We're actually, I'm so excited about this place. This is Staples, so our local stationery store. Um, they are worldwide in Canada, but in Oakville here they have a business center. So we're in the auditorium where you can do presentations. They have a little post podcast studio and they have mini office pods. So uh, thank you so much Staples. Uh, <laughs> we love the spot and it's really great for recording. I know that it is so important to have a wall and to recognize a power of attorney. So when you move to Canada or even wherever you are you need a will it's seriously important so Vincent it's actually great that we're chatting about mm. this today because um, it's very close to my heart things happen in life people pass away uh, or you might lose a parent and these things become important if you don't have a will mm. does your South African will still stand if you're living in a new country yeah. so let's tackle some of these things today sure and you know what when we talk about a will uh, when we do a financial plan for a client mm -hmm. uh, we we have six critical themes to financial wellness and the number six is, do you have a will and power of attorneys? Yeah. And when people complete um, their dashboard on wallstack.ca, we find that 50% of the people say they don't have a will. Uh, and so um, if you look at the research as well in Canada, is that, that is true, 50 to 55% of people don't have a will and power of attorney as they stand at the moment in Canada. So it's crazy. So the question is what happened you know, mm. to people that live here? Mm. And then also the other question is in terms of what happens to foreigners coming in from their country back into Canada. Okay. okay, so obviously South Africans, but any person moving mm -hmm. in, those wills are not relevant here. So that means that if you have a will in South Africa, for example, mm. um, it's not recognized in Canada uh, from an asset perspective and also okay. for your kids. And, and to some extent, that's also true for South Africans living in, in South Africa. If they, if they make use of investment platforms offshore, they need to make sure that those investment platforms assets will be covered by their South African will. Got it. Otherwise, they need to have a will that will cover the assets in Jersey, for example. Oh, in or both places. In both places. Okay. Okay, so it's more important than, obviously, if you move country, mm. that you, by the minimum, you need to have a will and power of attorneys in Canada and maybe still in South Africa. And we can touch on that. So let's get into the details of creating a will. I know you've got a story to share. I'm fortunate. Uh, my parents are still alive. Um, they're in South Africa, and I've got two brothers as well. Mm. And, um, you know, over the, over the last... 30 years, they often updated their will and they normally came back to us in terms of, you know, this is what we've changed in the will, you know, this is what the kids will inherit from, you know, they will inherit, inherit these watches or what the jewelry, whatever, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <laughs> taking photos of what they will get, yes. you know, but um, so it, to some extent a little bit funny, but it, 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 it definitely helps us as a family, you know, yeah. start talking about the in an effort will, you know, that mm. we're all going to pass away yeah. and it makes it so much easier for us to then as a family talk about you know, the difficult topic about death kind of thing. You mm, know? Mm. Um, so it takes the elephant out of the room and just uh, making sure that we can talk about things and it, and it just creates so much security for us as brothers, mm. you know, that we don't, we know that there's not gonna be any fighting, mm. you know, when it comes to money because, yeah. you know, we just talk about the things. I just think that that's probably the best thing that we can do for our family is if we're well prepared. It is yeah. gonna be such a stressful time and we all know that, you know, let's make sure that we plan properly. Let's make sure that we have all the things in place yeah. Uh, for them to pick it up and yeah. it's, it's not just the will you yeah. know it's um, stuff like you know where are your assets what is the what is the password to my Facebook and oh. LinkedIn what is what is the bank sure. account details yes. you know so there's a lot of stuff that um, uh, that that you need to plan and you can just do a role play you know mm. if I'm not there tomorrow uh, you know how is Karen gonna access my bank account yes um, does she have access how can yes. she access my social media yeah. Uh, does she know all the passwords and all the things that, sure. I, that I use? You know, you so know the things that you don't think about. And you're, you're right, I think we can avoid all of that stress by doing, it's our responsibility yeah. as parents or whoever it is to actually do this for your family. Yeah. I agree with you because it's very stressful. And usually if there is a death in the family, it's so, emotions are so heightened yeah. that people don't think straight. You need to have stuff on paper to help you and guide you. Exactly. Let's talk about the differences of wills in Canada versus South Africa. Sure. So in South Africa, you normally have a will for the couple. Okay, so Cara and I had one will that covers both sides. Yes. Okay, so it's one piece of paper mm -hmm. um, that covers both things. 
uh, or both individuals. In Canada, you would have a, uh, a will for each person. So there are two wills, uh, which kind of makes sense, you know, mm. two individuals. Mm. And then also you have two power of attorneys for each. So yeah. power of attorney for a property and power of attorney for health. So a family would have at least six documents uh, that they would need to keep uh, in file. We talked a little earlier about uh, the will in South Africa and here, mm. two things there. The one is you need a will in the place where the assets are held. So if you still have assets in South Africa, you need a will that covers the assets in South Africa. Okay. And then obviously the assets in Canada. Um, on, that makes sense. Side. So I think that that's very important. So people, the f you know, people are watching this need to understand that obviously if you have one will, you kind of think that's the one that super supersedes all of your wills. And l lawyers often give that advice. But if you're an immigrant and you've got stuff in yeah. South Africa, what is going to actually control those properties and assets? Yes. What is written to um, kind of solidify mm. all of that? So you're right. So you're going to have to have both. Both, both. Okay. And then also maybe just in the guardianship, it is a bit of a complicated thing. And, okay. you know, uh, and that's where the advice on the, from the lawyers are important. Mm. So if you, obviously, if you travel to Canada, for example, uh, and you have a will here, you always want to make sure that there are the right guardians in place, mm -hmm. you know, that will look after them. And they also specify in the will normally, you know, who will look after those kids for the first 48 hours, Jeez. okay, or 72 hours. Yeah. And who will look after them, um, you know, once they can be handed over to the guardians. Yes. Because sometimes, obviously, the guardians might be in South Africa sure. and not here. So you need someone very short term that will take, a, you know, care yes. of them. So ideally, you would want your will to mirror from a guardianship perspective. Okay, you know, in, in both countries. In both countries, mm -hmm. just to be safe, you mm -hmm. know. Um, because it's obviously a lot more complicated if you kind of to just think about it. You live in Canada, you're a permanent resident here or, here, or mm. maybe a citizen. Yes. Now your will states that someone in South Africa, a foreign country, is going to look after your kids. Mm. Um, the Canadian government is obviously responsible for its citizens and it needs to make sure that those kids are handed over to the right people. Yeah. Okay, so um, there is definitely legal procedures that has to go through yeah. in terms of making sure that the kids can leave the country. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a straightforward just, yeah. this is what the world says and off they go. Yeah. Okay, so it's, um, oh, you it, know, it is a little know, bit more complicated. Yeah, than I don't that, know yeah. how you feel about this, but for me, it's almost like this brings us to another point of saying, we really need to think about who we choose as guardians. Mm. Maybe, it's not beneficial to have South African people as guardians if you're living in Canada. I mean, mm. we've been here for over five and a half years. Um, my kids love living in Canada. I don't think they'd ever want to go back to South Africa and mm. live there. I yeah. mean, their lives are here, that university. So uh, that's why I guess it brings us to the next thing of, you know, if you have any changes that happen in your life, yes. you have to keep updating your will. Is that yes, correct? That's right. Yeah, and, and I mean, just for us as well as the first two years, two, three years, uh, we would have sent our kids, well, in, in the world, it mm. says they had to go back to South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but now we've been here four or five years. Mm. And uh, just, you know, having, you know, talked to them, they definitely don't want to go back yeah. now because yeah. they've got more ties here. Sure. So then you have to change your world, obviously, and making yeah. sure that you have the right families here that mm -hmm. can look after them. Yeah. Um, so, um, so children uh, need that guardianship younger than 16 here. Okay. Obviously, you can... You can make sure that they be looked after till the age of 21, you know, okay. in, in a will. Um, but just back on your point in terms of when do we want to make changes, it's mm. obviously, you know, if there's a big change of family structure, if okay. there's a big acquisition of wealth, for example, um, if a, a child or dependent becomes disabled, okay. um, any change of life cover, insurance kind of policy. So right. by default, you do want to say that, you know, every five years you want to relook yeah. at that. Okay. If you have kids, maybe more often. Yes. Uh, because of the guardianship kind of thing. Exactly. Because as they go through different stages, what we found is that we think that different families will look after them differently. You yes. Know? Yes. Uh, and it's it's a bit of a moving target. Yeah. Uh, because you know, um, it's like family stays, but friends move, move around. Move around, and know? also I think relationships change. Yeah. You often have relationships with different seasons, and I think. There's certain people that just might resonate better with your kids exactly. uh, five years down the line or whatever. Okay, so let's get into power of attorney. I think it's important to understand mm. what is a power of attorney and then obviously there are two different types and how do we go about doing this? So power of attorneys are really there to help you and the family to govern the affairs of your health mm -hmm. and your assets before passing away. So when you pass away, obviously your will will kick in okay. uh, and then if you have specified a testamentary trust to be set up for the kids, 
uh, with the right trustees and the executives that will take care of that. Okay. Okay. So obviously those kind of things, the detail will come into the will. Mm -hmm. Um, but the power of attorneys really are there for before you pass away. Okay. So, for example, if you're in, in, in a car accident um, and you're on a ventilator, on machines, you know, who specify whether you should go on a ventilator mm -hmm. and who specifies that you shouldn't, mm. you know, so um, you want to be clear in terms of who can make those calls. Yes. Um, so that's the power of attorney for, for health and okay. living well. All right, okay. yes. Uh, then the second one is power of attorney of property, which is just, you know, someone can take care of the finances if you're not able to write a check or mm -hmm. deposit money or sell a property while you're still alive. Okay. Okay. So what is interesting is that 85% of power of attorneys are mm. acted on. Wow. Okay, at That's some point. high, Vincent. It is high. But if you kind of think about it, you know, a lot of elderly people, yeah. um, if they develop Alzheimer's, they can't yes. make decisions. Sure. So they had to have those power of attorneys mm. in place before it kind of happens. Yeah. You know? So it, it is high, but it's it's really important. Um, yeah, you hear about the situation where a person is kind of just being kept alive on machines and somebody's got to come yeah. in who is the power of attorney for the family mm. and say, you know, can help make that decision according to yes. what was yeah. decided on while you were still alive. Exactly. You appointed that person to make that decision yeah. for you, right? And, and when you when you uh, write your power of attorneys or when the legal counsel help you, yes. there's always, you know, two or three people. Okay. Because let's say my brother is the power of attorney for health. Yes. But what if he's not around? Oh, wow. You, yes. Yes. I mean, yes. let's say he's out of country, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, who can speak to the medical professionals? If he's yes. not there, then it's, you know, someone else. So the topic is pretty heavy going. And um, I think that it's so nice. I know Vincent does this and I want him to talk a little bit about it. But, you know, um, you need to maybe think ahead. So when you're doing your will and doing your powers of attorney, do something different and maybe you can include your kids to write letters. And I know Vincent has done, done something like this. Vincent, tell us about what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, I, I actually heard it on radio a few years ago and actually on Focus on the Family and they and they kind of just said, you know, it might be useful just to soften the whole thing about wills and power of attorneys by writing letters mm. uh, to your family. And so um, the idea is that, well, I've done not every year, but I've done a few for my kids. Uh, it's just to write them a letter about who they are, you know, what I see in them. Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing about wills is that your legacy can can live on. Yes. But often the, the legal document doesn't make room for that. No. So um, it is just that thought of, yes, I'm saying to my kids who they are now. Yes. You know, but sometimes it's, I think it will be good if they have a piece of paper handwritten. Beautiful. Not typed out, handwritten. Yes. Um, for them to to really see what dad and mom said about them yeah and in terms mm. of who they are what their identity is and what yes. their legacy is to have something so special written by mm. your own family member is absolutely beautiful I think mm. that's great mm. I think we should all be doing that and regardless of will and powers of attorney we should be doing this anyway and so you put them in little envelopes and then hide them away hide them away okay see it and so I think what could work quite nicely uh, Andrea is that if someone writes a letter you know just post it on YouTube to say I've done it because that's a great, you know, yes. just one thumbs up to say I've done something. Exactly. You know? So if you're watching this video and you've done your letter in the description and in the comments of the YouTube video, all you write is done it. And I think that's so encouraging. Let's mm. see how many people do that. Mm. Please do that. And not only for your kids, for different people in the family that are special to you. It means so much. So Vincent's got these great podcasts that he does. Please go and listen to them. So there's a lot of information, obviously, on our chats and the interviews on YouTube, mm -hmm. but the podcasts are really great. He speaks to fantastic people with great insight, um, and he's recently done one on walls and powers of attorney, so you need to go and check that one out. Are you loving the podcasts? I am. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. I know, Vincent, he's like, he's an actuary. He wants to do podcasts, not video. Um, but that's great. Please check out the... YouTube description mm. to get all the information. So Vincent's contact details, who to contact to get your will, etc. And we can assist you with all of that. Excellent. Andrea, thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. And if you found this video useful, I certainly did. I need to go and update my will because we yeah. bought a house, we've moved. So I need to do that. If you found it useful, give me a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get the updates when the next videos upload. It's been so good. And thank you Staples again for the venue. Have a great day.